Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very important clinical topic, the dissociated sensory loss. The dissociated sensory loss. As the name implies, it's the dissociation of sensations. We have basically two sensory tracts. One, the spinothalamic tract, which carries pain and temperature. Second, the posterior column, which carries touch, position, joint, vibration sense. So when one tract is affected and the other tract is spared, there is dissociation of sensations. For example, if spinothalamic tract is involved, the pain and temperature sensations carried by spinothalamic tract is affected, but the sensations carried by posterior column, that is touch, position, vibration sense is spared. So one track gets affected and its sensations get affected. The other track and its sensations get spared. This is the dissociation of sensory loss. When there are, when the tracks come together, it is association. When the tracks go apart, it is dissociation. So dissociated sensory loss means spinothalamic tract involvement and the sensations carried by spinothalamic tract, namely pain and temperature being affected. But the posterior column is spared and the sensations carried by posterior column, touch, position, joint, vibration, spin, sense are spared. So one track can get affected, the other track can get spared. Or one track can get affected on one side, the other track can get affected on the opposite side. So that dissociation of sensations, we call it as dissociated sensory loss. Very interesting phenomenon. I'll give you an example why it is so interesting and exciting. When a person has got dissociated sensory loss, that is pain is affected but touch is pain. So if a person is touched, she is able to feel but the pain sensation she is not able to feel. In fact, we had one exciting uh, patient who had syringomyelia. So she was able to feel the touch but when she kept her hand in the fire, she was not even able to appreciate the five sensation and she burned the hand. This is syringomyelia for you. So pain and temperature are lost but touch and vibration position sense are spared. Person suffering from syringomyelia, she could appreciate the sensations of her clothes but when she kept her hand in the fire, she is not able to appreciate it and she burned the hands. Very interesting phenomenon, syringomyelia where pain is lost but touch is spared. So what are all the conditions where the spinothalamic tract is affected and posterior column is spared. So the tracts are separated apart, one in the brain stem, second in the spinal cord. So these are the places where we can get dissociated sensory loss. Thalamus and parietal cortex, they are close together. Peripheral now, they are close together. So one place, the, the, to be precise, the two places, where there could be a dissociation of sensations, one tract being affected, the other tract being spared is in the spinal cord. Second is the brain stem, especially medulla oblongata. So we'll see all the four exciting conditions which can cause this dissociated sensory loss. One, it can occur at the level of the medulla oblongata, what we call it as Wallenberg syndrome. Second, it can occur at the level of the cavity, central cavity of the spinal cord, what we call it as syringomyelia. Third, we can get an anterior spinal artery syndrome where only the anterior cord is affected but the posterior cord and the posterior columns are spared. And fourth, we can get it in brown sec cord syndrome, a hemidissection of the cord where spinothalamic tract is affected on the opposite side whereas posterior column is affected on the same side. So this is dissociated sensory loss. First, we see that in Wallenberg syndrome. In Wallenberg syndrome, we can see the spinal cord the medulla oblongata, we have the medial and the lateral part. In the medial part of the medulla oblongata, we have posterior column, 12th nerve and pyramidal tract. But in the lateral part of the medulla oblongata, we have spinothalamic tract and the spinal tract of the cranial nerve, 5. So, Wallenberg syndrome is a lateral medullary syndrome. So, it affects the lateral structures but spares the medial structures. 
So the medial structure that is the posterior column is spared, but the lateral structure that is the spinal thalamic tract and the spinal tract of the cranial nerve 5 were affected. So in Wallenberg syndrome, we have the pain and temperature loss but sparing of the posterior column because the posterior column are in the medial part of the middle oblongata and they are spared whereas the lateral part of the middle oblongata contains this spinothalamic tract and gets affected. So we have a very interesting clinical manifestation especially the sensory manifestation in Wallenberg syndrome. So we have both the spinal tract of the cranial nerve 5 getting affected and the spinothalamic tract getting affected. When the spinal tract of the cranial nerve 5 gets affected the pain and temperature loss is on the face on one side same side as that of the lesion that is the Wallenberg syndrome lateral medullary syndrome so the pain and temperature loss is on the same side on the face but the pain and temperature loss on the opposite side body and the limbs so on the face it is the same side because of the involvement of the spinal tract of the trigeminal nerve so pain and temperature loss is on the same side of the face that is for example, if we take left Wallenberg syndrome, left side the pain and temperature is loss is there on the face because of the involvement of the spinal tract of the trigeminal nerve. But on the body, on the opposite side, that is the trunk and the lower limbs, it is on the opposite side pain and temperature loss because of the spinothalamic tract which carries pain and temperature sensations and goes over to the opposite side. So, ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature on the face and contralateral loss of pain and temperature on the opposite side of the body very characteristic of lateral medullary syndrome, Wallenberg syndrome. So here again there is a dissociated sensory loss. Only pain and temperature are affected because the lateral part of the medulla is oblong is affected. But posterior column sensations can by, by the medial part of the medulla oblong it is spared. So, so dissociated sensory loss is characteristically seen in Wallenberg syndrome. The other place where it is seen is in the syringomyelia. In fact, one of the important findings in the it is one of the commonest causes of dissociated sensory loss. So if someone asks what is the commonest cause of dissociated sensory loss and what is the characteristic manifestations of syringomyelia, the characteristic manifestation of syringomyelia is dissociated sensory loss. So whenever we hear the word dissociated sensory loss, we usually relate it to syringomyelia. Why in syringomyelia only the pain and temperature sensations carried by spinothalamic tract is affected, but sensations that is such position vibrations and carried by posicorn is spared? It is because in the syringomyelia, the cavity, the center part of the spinal cord gets affected. The spinothalamic tract crosses over the opposite side, traverses the spinal cord and goes over to the opposite side. So the lesion is there in the center of the spinal cord. It affects the crossing over the spinothalamic tract fibers, but spares the posterior column, which do not cross at the level of the spinal cord, but crosses at the level of the medulla oblongata. So when there is a cavity in the center of the lesion, it affects the traversing spinothalamic tract fibers but spares the posterior column fibers. So pain and temperature sensations carried by spinothalamic tract is affected whereas the sensations carried by posterior column position joint vibration are spared. So dissociated sensory loss very characteristic of syringomyelia. So syringomyelia is the second place where we see the dissociated sensory loss. The third is the anterior spinal cord syndrome. The anterior part of the spinal cord is supplied by the anterior spinal artery. Almost all the structures of the spinal cord, post uh, the spinothalamic tract, the pyramidal tract, and all the structures are supplied by the anterior spinal artery, except the posterior column, which is on the posterior side of the spinal cord, which is supplied by the posterior spinal artery. So when the anterior spinal artery is involved, when the anterior spinal artery is involved, all the structures except the posterior column are affected. That is the spinothalamic tract is affected. So pain and temperature sensation is lost. But since posterior column is supplied by the posterior spinal artery, the sensations carried by posterior column, namely the touch position vibrations and suspend. So another characteristic place where we find the dissociated sensory loss is anterior spinal cord syndrome, where the spinal anterior spinal artery is involved. Only the spinothalamic tract is affected because spinothalamic tract in the spinal cord is supplied by the anterior spinal artery, but the posterior column, which is in the posterior part of the spinal cord, is spared because it is supplied by the posterior spinal artery. So, another characteristic place where we see this dissociated sensory loss is the anterior spinal cord syndrome. And finally, very interesting is the Brown Sequard syndrome. Brown Sequard syndrome is the hemisection of the spinal cord where one half of the spinal cord is cut off and therefore the posterior column sensations which are on the same side get affected whereas the spinothalamic tract 
crosses immediately over to the opposite side. So when there's a hemi section of the spinal cord, example on the right side, the posterior column sensations are affected on the right side. That is the position joint vibration sensors are lost on the right side. But the spinothalamic tract crosses over to the opposite side. Therefore, the pain and temperature sensations carried by spinothalamic tract is affected on the opposite side. So again, we see the dissociated sensory loss. One side, the posterior column sensations are lost. The other side, the spinothalamic tract sensations, that is pain and temperature sensations are lost. So very, very interesting. So when we, when we find dissociated sensory loss, it has to be in either the medulla oblongata or Wallenberg syndrome or in the syring, syringomyelia or the anterior spinal artery syndrome or the brown sac cord syndrome. So these are the four places where we see the dissociated sensory loss. Dissociation of sensation, that is the loss of pain and temperature sensations carried by spinothalamic tract but preservation of position joint vibration sense carried by posterior column. But if someone asks what is the what is the where is the place where we characteristically find dissociated sensory loss, the answer should be always be syringomyelia. Because syringoma is one of the important causes of dissociated sensory loss. So very important and interesting clinical manifestations, a purely clinical topic. By just clinical examination, we can localize the lesion. That is the joy of clinical neurology, and these are the clinical pearls of the dissociated sensory loss. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture. If you have any suggestions or, or comments, please post on to my YouTube channel. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Sinwas Medical Concepts, and my FB page, Dr. Sinwas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.